Oh, God. Oh, God. Oh, God. I don't even use author's note this time. This time it's bolded, but there's no author's note heading before it. And now the chapter title is italicized as well as bolded. Oh, God. Thank you for reading. I love you all. And that's love spelled L-U-V. After I greet you all, I don't quite know what to say. I can't keep saying thank you for reading. Hmm. I'll think about that one. You don't need to say anything. If you don't have anything to say, just don't say it. Thank you. I love hearing my own voice in this microphone. It's so nice. And I'm just going to whisper so that I can into your ear. Okay. Anyway. I do this when I'm recording. I do that all the time. It's really weird. I'm weird. Forgive me for being weird. And I I have weird hair, too. I like weird hair. I want to be known as the person who has a different hairstyle every time she goes on camera. <laughs> all right. Chapter 2. Castletown. All of a sudden. Epona jumped the fence, and as they swept across Hyrule Field, Malin looked back and shed a tear. Ah! She felt horrible for abandoning her father, Talon, like this, because we need to mention his name as Talon again, because we don't know this, apparently. But she would come back, right? Foreshadowing. And then we finally mention Talon again. Oh, dear God. Malin decided if she wanted some answers, she'd have to go to the source in Castletown. What is the source? Is it Princess Zelda? I just expect you to know this, apparently. I mean, you could probably assume it's Princess Zelda, but you may not assume it's Princess Zelda. <laughs> she yawned, stretched, and looked around. She'd been sleeping in the saddle, a useful skill Talon had taught her at a young age. Is that actually a thing? I don't even know if that's a thing. Please tell me if that's a thing. I don't think it's a thing. I don't think people sleep in saddles. Maybe they do. I don't fucking know. Why would Talon have taught it to her? I need some water. This is making my head hurt. Okay. Uh, oh, I totally skipped a bunch, didn't I? Yeah. All right. Malin decided if she wants some answers, she'd have to go to the source in Castletown. The journey to Castletown would take about a day's worth of travel. The sun was already low in the sky. Just getting there would take all night. As the first cuckoo crowed, Malin saw the distant outline of Castletown. You'd be able to see it from the ranch. It wouldn't take you a day to get there. Um, she yawned, stretched, and looked around. She'd been sleeping in the saddle, a useful skill talent and taught her at a young age. The drawbridge to the town and palace beyond had just thumped to the ground as Malin tied up a pony. All of a sudden, it's morning. All of a sudden. <sighs> Malin was cautious. She was never in town much, but proceeded onward. It looked like she had stumbled upon one of the more busy days at the market. Everywhere, people were rushing to get at the best goods, and vendors were shouting out their product. They are spelled wrong again. Their products. It was all very noisy. This is me at 12, realizing I'm an introvert, suddenly and without warning. I am actually an introvert. I didn't know I was really an introvert until like age 13, though. <laughs> at a cast party when I was like, ah, oh, fuck, I hate this. Get me out of here. It's noisy and shit. Uh, yeah. This... This whole piece is like a Freudian shit of my 12-year-old self. All Everything I write is like just a look at the inside of my head. Like uh, this novel I recently finished that I need to edit and eventually I want to publish. Like there's this whole conversation between two characters that's just me literally talking to myself about going to college. It's kind of freaky. <laughs> um, right, anyway. Stop distracting me. Gosh. Get on with it. The smell of freshly baked bread wafted under Malin's nose. Her stomach growled, and she realized that she hadn't eaten since yesterday morning. She's been starving herself for the love of Link. She pulled out a few of the uh, the few rubies, which I didn't spell. I spelled them as rubies. R-U-B-I-E-S. Rubies. R-U-P-E-E-S. I think. Maybe. I need to look it up. <sighs> she pulled. Oh, excuse me. She pulled out one of the few rubies she had and followed her nose. Malin had to shove her way through quite a bit of meandering people to get some bread. She was shocked when she read the price sign: five rubies for a bun. That's ridiculous. Absolutely, God, that's ridiculous. I don't even know how much rubies are worth. 
she thought, but food was food. So Malin paid the vendor and found a quiet spot to eat. She never mentioned bringing money along. Like, she just had it somehow. Like, uh, I thought she just pulled the cloak on and went. Pulled the cloak on and went. She remembered coming here with her father on that fateful day when she first met Link. Flashback again! Talon had a big wagon which he used to haul goods to the market. Mostly milk. Obviously milk. Today, he had a special order from the castle. Ten dozen bottles of milk. That's a fucking fuck ton of milk. Talon needed help hauling the milk to the castle, so Malin went with him. Malin had been in awe with the market. She had never been to a market and gazed with wide eyes at everything she saw. Eventually, Talon left her in front of the castle to guard the rest of the boxes while he took some in. I always wondered why the fuck he left her alone. Like, that, that doesn't even make any sense, like, in the context of the game. Why does he leave a ten-year-old girl out in front of the castle alone? <sighs> Excuse me. And fall asleep. Like, why? Why would you do this? After a few hours, Malin knew that Talon had fallen asleep. Of fucking course. Then, the boy came. <gasps> no, not the boy. Anything but the boy. Uh, he pushed around. He was pushed around by the gate. The guard at the gate. Well, if I can read, Malin felt kind of sorry for him. What are you doing? The boy was walking gloomily back to the market. He looked up. I was trying to get to the castle to see the princess. I had a special mission to see her. You're twelve. I'll give you a pass on that one. Malin giggled. Well, you'll never get in that way. Tell you what, my father is sleeping somewhere in there. If you promise to find him, I'll show you a secret way into the castle. Malin had found this secret way about an hour into her father leaving, but she didn't use it for some reason. It's there. She didn't use it. She's just there. Oh, God. Present day Malin had just finished her bun and it stood up. End of flashback. All of a sudden, no reason, no way. Just, ugh. If she was going to see the princess, she'd better hurry. She ran up the path to the gate. About 50 feet from the gate, Malin found some vines and climbed up the sheer rock face because there's not a stronger guard there now that the sorcerer king practically fucking burned your castle to the ground and shit and now everything's just back to normal. Those vines are still there after eight years. God. God. At the top, she walked atop the gate and found a hole with a ladder. She climbed down and ran on. Malin kept away from the guards and managed to sneak into the princess's garden. Princess Zelda? asked Malin. Welcome, Malin. I've been expecting you. We don't know how she's been expecting her or why or how she even knows who the fuck she is. I hate you all. Why are you making me read this? God damn it. All right. Author's note again. Now it says author's note. Black Cat 8991 here. Fuck me. Fuck me. Why? Why? Welcome to the third chapter of Malin's Journey. No shit. I have nothing more to say. Still thinking of something interesting to say. Hmm. Did you have to say that? Did you, did you, did you even need to leave an author's note? No. No, you did not. <sighs> well, I forgive my yawning. It's like 10 in the morning. I don't know why I'm yawning. Probably because I'm reading so much. All right. Chapter 3. The princess turned away from the window in the courtyard to smirk at an abashed and gaping girl. How, how, how did you know my name? Malin gasped. Link always talked quite a bit about you. You ha you saw Link for like five minutes at the end of the game. Oh my god. Like, you didn't know him. You didn't know him either, Zelda. No one knew him. Oh my god, except me. I know Link. I know him more than anyone. No, fuck off. Fuck off, fangirl me. All right. Oh, well, Zelda, I've come here because I know why you've come here, Zelda said, amused. I kind of portray her as a bitch. It sucks. You've come to learn where Link is, because, of course, I had to kind of portray her as a bitch, because this is Melon. This is Melon's story! Fuck you, Zelda. Get out of my story. Gotta fix my hair. It's coming down to my face. Alright. 
but how? I figured you'd come sooner or later, after you asked me about it at the crowning. It was a crowning? Uh, we didn't know that. Great. Okay. Well then, where is he? I sent him back. Because she's supposed to get that. Malin was confused. Back? To relive his childhood, Zelda finished. Then I can't get him back? The princess chuckled. You can try. Why are you telling her any of this? Like, you sent him back to protect Hyrule or some goddamn shit like that. Give him another chance. I don't fucking know. So, now you're gonna ha help Malin get him back. Great. This sparked an idea. Maybe Malin could try to get Link back. No shit. How? I I I'll do anything. Anything? The princess's smirk intensified. Yes. Good. Because the journey ahead of you is very dangerous and long. You must find the entrance to Termina. And the only person who can find the entrance is the holder of the hidden piece of the Tetra Force. I, I backed myself into a corner. Because I worked the story backwards. I wanted to get... Malin to Termina to be at the final battle of Majora's Mask with Link for whatever reason. So I had to work back how can I get her into that alternate timeline and it got really convoluted and fucking intense and I hated it. Oh my god. <laughs> uh, Tetraforce? That story is for another time. But as I was saying, you must find this bearer of the fourth piece. The only way to find this person is to travel to the sacred realm. But but, but the only entrance is behind the door of time. Malin, your sources aren't the most reliable. Zelda chuckled again. God, why did I write her as a bitch? Zelda isn't a bitch. Why did I make her a bitch? Why? Why did I make her a bitch? I'm mad at myself. I can't believe I made Princess Zelda a bitch. I hate... God damn it. Why did I do that? I was stupid. Ugh. And also, how does Malin even know about the Sacred Realm at all? Great. Uh, Malin frowned. This self-centered princess was making fun of her. Oh, and what do your sources say? Malin asked, putting her hands in her hips. My sources? The princess pointed at herself innocently. My sources say there is another entrance to the Sacred Realm. Where? In the Shadow Temple. A fucking chorus. God damn it. Edgy! Just who are these sources of yours? Zelda pointed behind Malin. She turned and fell over. Standing behind her was the tallest, strongest Malin had ever seen. There was supposed to be a woman there, but I forgot to write that for some reason. Zelda walked over to the woman and said, This is Impa, my bodyguard. Heh heh, hello! Well, Zelda asked, well, what? Are you going to the, go to the Shadow Temple? Just suddenly, without warning. Uh, Malin considered her options. She could go to the Shadow Temple and face the horrible monstrosities that were sure to lurk within, find the entrance to the Sacred Realm and find Link, or she could go back to the ranch and live a peaceful, if boring life. Uh, I'd choose the latter. This is a guy you met twice for like five minutes. And you're gonna... Risk your life for him. There, there's more fish in the sea there, Malin. There, there's more guys out there. I, you know? You know? Alone? Malin asked after a pause. I'll go with you. Imba had a low voice that sounded just as tough as she looked. <laughs> All right, I'll do it. One last thing before you go. Zelda said, her cool demeanor faltering a bit. Link gave this to me, but but I think he wanted you to have it. Zelda handed Malin Link's bow and quiver. When the hell did he give that to her, and why the fuck does Zelda think it goes to Malin? This is not explained. I never wrote this. Why did I never... I expect people to see the inside of my head. Why did I expect people to see the inside of my head? Ugh, great. Really? Malin felt like crying. This gift made Malin miss Link even more, but even more determined to find him. As Malin and Impa headed out of Castletown, suddenly, suddenly, scene ends. Boop, bye-bye. Uh, Malin asked, so where is this Shadow Temple? In Kakariko Village. Da -da -da! That's, that's such a cliff. Yeah, we knew it was there. Yeah, that's not a cliffhanger, me. It's not a cliffhanger.
three more chapters. Three more chapters.